Good morning, Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. We're continuing our study of Paul's co-workers uh, from the book of Acts and from his letters, and we're in the middle of our conversation about Timothy. We took three sessions to talk about Paul and Barnabas, and we took two uh, to talk about Priscilla and Aquila, and we're going to take four to talk about Timothy. And yesterday, when we were together last time, we established the nature of their relationship, that it truly was a, 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 a very deeply loving parent-child relationship, and that Paul found in Timothy the son he was not going to have otherwise as a single man, and that Timothy found in Paul the spiritual father he did not have as a disciple and before that a Jewish young man because his father was a Greek. And so they have that very close connection. And we want to look today uh, at just how deeply Paul trusts Timothy and depends on Timothy for the work. We talked yesterday that Tim about Timothy's role being, Timothy's role being that of troubleshooter, the guy that Paul continued, and from almost immediately, almost immediately, really within weeks of taking on Timothy as his helper, he sends him back to... Uh, Thessalonica to see how things are going. So he keeps sending him back to Macedonia, to Achaia, to Corinth, sends him to Ephesus. He plays that role um, of troubleshooter for the Apostle Paul until Paul sends him to be the minister of a congregation for a while. But it's also true that when, 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 when the moment of decision comes, when the moment of crisis comes where things are going to change, Paul wants him with him. I need you here with me. And Paul decides to go back to Jerusalem with the offering that he had collected, and he knows he's going to be arrested because the prophet told him that. Then he takes Timothy with him. And when he's in the deep, dark jail in Rome, right before his execution, and he writes Second Timothy, the last thing he writes before he dies, he says, I need you to come, and I need you to come now. I need you to bring my coat. I need you to bring John Mark. I need you to get here. Luke's here. Bob. I just have Luke here with me right now. I need you to come quickly. And that's the kind of relationship they had. I want us to look at two passages, one from 1 Corinthians, the Achaean Christians, and one from Philippians, the Macedonian Christians, places where Timothy spent a lot, spent a lot of time, or where Paul sent him, he sent him to both areas multiple times. We know this from the book of Acts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, he's already mentioned that Timothy's been there with him, and he tells him, I'm sending him back. And he references that visit in 2 Corinthians. But he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 10 and 11, Now if Timothy comes, see that he is with you, without cause to be afraid. For he is doing the Lord's work, as I also am. Let no one therefore despise him, but send him on his way in peace, so that he may come to me, for I expect him with the brethren. Okay, so evidently Timothy is going and then he's coming back. And Paul has certain expectations. One is, I want you to pay for his passage back. That, that's what, what it means when he says, I want you to send him back to me, send him on his way. Um, but the other is, I want you to be nice to him when he's there, because he's my representative. And do not despise him. That's a phrase Paul is going to repeat when he writes 1 Timothy, years later. When he writes 1 Timothy, and he says, let no one despise your youth. And so Timothy is evidently a young man. If he's young, when he, when, when he goes to work at Ephesus, he's even younger when Paul writes 1 Corinthians. And um, so he's a young, very young man. Paul talks in 2 Timothy about his timidness. I don't know how timid you can be when Paul's sending you all over creation to travel by yourself to these churches to deal with problems. But there evidently is an issue with him being disrespected because of his youth, not taken seriously, that comes through. I mean, it comes through in verses 10 and 11 here. Uh, I think he fared much better in Macedonia. Um, but even in Macedonia, Paul goes out of his way to talk about how necessary Timothy is to the work, to his work. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 24, if we want to know what Paul feels about Timothy and how close their relationship is, we just need to read these verses. 
I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly so that I may also be encouraged when I learn of your condition. Now, Paul's writing this from jail. For I have no one else of kindred spirit who will genuinely be concerned for your welfare. They all seek after their own interests and not those of Christ Jesus, but you know of his proven worth that he served with me in the furtherance of the gospel like a child serving his own father. Therefore, I hope to send him immediately as soon as I see how things go with me, and I trust also in the Lord that I myself shall come shortly. Now, it's neat that right after Paul has written to them about having the mind in you that is in Christ Jesus, that he gives them two examples of men who set that example. And one of them is Epaphroditus. We'll talk, be talking about him later, one of their own. And, and, and one is Timothy, and the first one he mentions is Timothy. And he says, I'm sending Timothy to you, and, and I, I'm looking forward to him bringing back a good report. In fact, I hope to come to you shortly. Whether that happened or not, I'm not sure, because we're not sure whether he's writing this from his first incarceration or what is likely his second incarceration. We'll talk about that when we talk about 2 Timothy. Um, but he's right, and he said, I, I hope I get to come to you too. But he says, listen, you know what he meant to me and what he meant to you when he was, when I, when he was there before. And then he says, and I don't know whether he needs to warn them to be nice to Timothy. I don't think so. I think he's saying this as an example of someone being of the mind of Christ. I think he's, I think he says it. there's nobody I work with who is as much like me in here, in his heart. I mean, our dispositions may be different and I may be older and he's younger, but our hearts are identical. They beat in time and in tune with each other. Nobody cares as much about you than he does, except me. <laughs> we care about you more than anyone else. And, and, um, and he puts you first in a way that, that I do too. And our, and our hearts are beating in, 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 in sync. And, um, so if we really want to know how he feels about Timothy, we're told in the book of Philippians, this congregation that he loves the best and that makes him the, the happiest he's writing about the young man that he loves the deep, the deepest and that he depends upon the most. It's just quite a gift to read those verses. Okay, we're going to talk about 1 Timothy next time. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.